Let's write your first Rust program today without installing anything on your computer. The first time you take a look at Rust, you may feel an incentive to go download everything. Download the compiler, the package manager, get your editor set up, find a bunch of plugins, use Rust Analyzer, etc. Today, we're going to skip all that, and we're just going to get right into writing Rust programs. To do that, we're going to use the Rust Playground. The Rust Playground offers us a bunch of different features, but today we're just going to use it to write a small Rust program and then build and run it and see the output. So let's get into writing your first Rust program. When writing a Rust program, you have two options. You can either build a library or you can build a binary. A binary is something that we will run, something like a CLI tool or an API server. A library, by contrast, is something that somebody else will use to build their own application or their own binary. For example, an argument parsing library for a CLI tool or a routing library for an API server. We'll start with a binary that prints hello world, which is something of a classic starting point when learning a new language. We start off by using the letters fn to define the main function. For binaries, the function called main is required and also special. It's the entry point that will run whenever somebody decides to execute our binary. Inside of our main function, we use the print line macro to print out the words hello world with an exclamation point to the console. Now, we don't have a console here, so the Rust Playground is going to capture this for us and show it on the website. To run your first Rust program on Rust Playground, you can click the Run button up in the top left. The output should look like this, with two sections. One is standard error, and one is standard output. The reason we have two labels here is kind of esoteric, so we'll keep it high level for now. Standard error is where additional non-critical information gets put out, and standard output is where the output from our program gets put. The additional output on standard error often includes warnings, errors, and additional information that isn't part of our main program. For example, the standard error section that we see in our output after running our program is the output the Rust compiler gives us that gives us some additional information about how our binary was compiled and what happened when it was. The first line of the output includes the name of our binary, the version of our binary, and the file system directory that we used when we built the project. The name and the version of our binary are usually defined in the cargo.toml file, which if you've watched other videos, you'll understand is similar to a package JSON. The Rust Playground generates this cargo.toml for us so that we only write our main.rs file, which is why the version is 001, and why the name of our binary is Playground. The second line shows us which profile was used for compilation and how long it took. Cargo has two main profiles, dev and release. The dev profile is set up to make development and multiple compilations faster and easier. It includes a bunch of debug info for showing us errors and other information about our program, and does fewer optimizations, saving compile time. The release profile is basically the opposite. It removes all the debug information so that we don't slow down our production build and does more optimization passes. This will result in faster execution times, but potentially longer compile times because of the extra optimization work that's going on. Finally, the third line tells us which binary is being run. The target folder is where all of our build artifacts end up, no matter what profile we were using. The debug folder will include all of the artifacts from our dev profile, while the release folder would include all of the dev artifacts from our release profile build. And finally, the name of our binary is playground, so we end up with target, debug, playground. The text in the standard output section is our program's output. We told our program to print hello world with an exclamation point on its own line using the print line macro which is exactly what happened here. Let's change the output a little bit. The print line macro accepts formatting arguments in the first string that we pass it. In this case, we can replace the word world with two curly braces. This is what we'll come to know later as the display formatter, because it uses the functions on the display trait to convert the argument that we give it into a string that can be printed. In this case, we'll use our own name as the argument. My name is Chris, so I'll use Chris. As you might imagine, the display trait implementation for a string is just the string. So there's nothing magical going on here. Run the program by clicking the button in the top left again, and you'll see hello your name in the output. That was your first working Rust program. Congrats. You can continue using the Rust playground as long as you'd like. There are quite a few other features, such as compiling in release mode or formatting your application code. And you'll get feedback for warnings or compile errors as you work through your application. It even supports some, but not all, third-party crates. You can continue to use Rust Playground to play more with Rust, or you could go install Rust on your system next.